Good morning. My name is Ilana Rue, and I am proud to serve as the president and CEO of the Detroit Historical Society. I'm honored to follow in the footsteps of museum directors and society leaders who came before me over the last 100 years. In 1921, several prominent Detroiters led by Clarence Burton founded the Detroit Historical Society. And I've wondered if perhaps it wasn't the pandemic of 1918 when so many Detroiters lost their lives that inspired Burton to officially start a historical society to ensure that the city's stories were saved. Either way, their mission was to preserve the history of this booming industrial town that had been named by a French explorer over 200 years earlier. And today, our mission is much the same, to tell Detroit stories and why they matter. I'm proud to welcome you to the official kickoff of the Detroit Historical Society's centennial celebrations, which recognize our 10 decades of history and look forward to the decades to come. For 100 years, the Detroit Historical Society has encouraged historical scholarship, preservation, and education. In partnership with the City of Detroit and generations of sponsors, donors, staff, trustees, volunteers, and members, our work continues. In fact, I think it's never been more important than it is right now. The stories of our city are captured in a significant collection of more than 250,000 artifacts and documents that tell the stories of Detroit and are shared through our exhibitions, our programs, tours, publications, and online content. We've just lived through a year like none other in recent history. Yet in 2020, the society managed to innovate and thrive with new virtual programs, social media and video series, our first ever podcast, and more. Our museums have been safely open and welcoming the public since last July. And we are excited to have you visit us too. We invite you to come to our museums this summer to see our newest exhibitions, Detroit's Brewing Heritage, Boomtown Detroit in the 1920s, and its companion exhibit, 20 for the 20s, at the Dawson Great Lakes Museum. The Detroit Historical Society has grown and adapted for 10 decades and will continue to lead even as the region's cultural needs shift. What Detroiters created over the last century is amazing, and we take our responsibility to continue that work very seriously. As we look ahead, we're inspired and excited by the opportunity we have to evolve the museums for the next 100 years so that future generations of visitors will know our stories and what makes our city as remarkable and unique as it is. Today, I invite you to join us in our challenge to set the next century up for success. Get involved at any of our upcoming centennial events. Stop by the Detroit Historical Museum or the Dawson Great Lakes Museum with your family or friends or visit our online collection or any of our virtual resources at DetroitHistorical.org, or tell us your stories for one of our oral history projects. Our celebration will continue through 2022, and we hope you'll get a chance to participate often. As chair of the Detroit Historical Society's Board of Trustees, I am humbled by the long line of board leaders who have preceded me and set the society up for this centenary celebration. Their success provides an excellent roadmap of where we've been and where we might be headed. Besides past society board chairs and presidents, I must thank the hundreds of board members who have been so generous with their valuable time, knowledge, and resources, as well as the thousands of volunteers for leading educational tours, serving at events, and processing artifacts. Without 10 decades of such commitment, our historical community would be much reduced. Finally, as we kick off celebrating 100 years of history, we thank the people of the city of Detroit and the communities of Southeastern Michigan. Your ancestors, whether born here or not, made Detroit the city that it is today. Without you, we would have no story to tell. Your interest in this story helps to ensure that future generations will come to understand their rich heritage. Thank you for supporting our mission I look forward to seeing you around the museum soon. Hi, I'm Joel Stone and I'm the senior curator with the Detroit Historical Society. A hundred years ago, 1921, the city of Detroit and the area around the Detroit River had had already thousands of years of built up history. History that started with Native Americans coming in and then a very small European settlement growing into a very large European settlement and gradually this, this multicultural uh, metropolis that we now call the city of Detroit. In 1921, 
this history had, was, was already rich. And there was a group of men who decided that somebody ought to start capturing this. One of them was Clarence Burton. And Clarence Burton, through his work and through his avocation, had been collecting the history of Detroit uh, most of his career. And he had developed an incredible library. He donated it to the Detroit Public Library. It became the Burton Historical Collection. And he, along with Al Finn and Divi Duffield, friends of his, decided that they needed a society to save and preserve and continue telling this history. And so on December 15th, 1921, they gathered a group of congenial souls uh, at the Detroit Public Library and formed the Detroit Historical Society. That society has grown over time. It's become, in fact, a family of multiple organizations that we've worked with through that hundred years, besides partners that included other historical organizations, um, civic organizations, neighborhood organizations, uh, groups in, in uh, social organizations. All of these came together to help the Detroit Historical Society become what it is today. Uh, it kind of, if we talk about it in phases, it might be easier to explain. Um, the first phase was, was pretty basic. The first phase was a group of people getting together uh, once a month, once every three or four months at the Burton Historical Collection and later at other auditoriums and restaurants and hotels to have lectures, to have meetings, to gather around dinner and just discuss Detroit's history. And for the first phase, which lasted about 20 years, that was enough. Um, in that first phase, there kind of grew a problem. Uh, many of the members and many other people in the city of Detroit who were donating papers and, and ephemera to the Burton Historical Collection also had artifacts that they wanted to donate. And the Burton, being part of a library, uh, didn't have the capability of doing that. So at one point, J. Bell Moran, being one of the trustees of the Detroit Historical Society, convinced the society that they needed to start collecting these things so that they weren't going to antique dealers or worth yet to the dump. And, and put them into a space where people could appreciate them. And at that point, Moran rented a space in Barlam Tower, which today is Cadillac Tower. This was on the 23rd floor, which made it probably the highest museum in the world. It was in an office space, and it soon got cramped. There was many, many things coming in. There was fewer and fewer places to put them. And eventually, this spurned the second phase. The second phase came about when George Stark, who was the editor of the Detroit News and a columnist with the News, started looking into the Detroit Historical Society. He had given a couple of talks and became a trustee. And then at a point when Moran had to go off to World War II, um, Stark stepped up and became the president of the society. One of the things he did, and some of the other folks in the trustee ranks, they went around and they checked out other museums around the country. And they realized that other cities were funding their museums. And Stark came back and had enough influence within the city government that he convinced them that they needed to form a Detroit Historical Commission to overlook the city's overall history progress and also create a Detroit Historical Department that would run real museums, not a museum and a skyscraper, but real museums. And the city did that. They had a charter that everybody voted on and they formed the Detroit Historical Department and then started uh, working toward museums. This is where the Detroit Historical Society took on a different aspect. Uh, they became more of a fundraiser and a support organization for the Detroit Historical Department. Uh, they raised a quarter of a million dollars toward a new museum. And little by little, that money continued to grow. And in fact, the Detroit Historical Museum was built. It opened on Woodward Avenue in the Cultural Center in 1951. Prior to that, though, there were a couple of other things that were going on in the background. One of those was that a schooner was donated to the city's historical department to become a maritime museum. And in fact, I'm in the Dawson Great Lakes Museum. In the spot where I'm standing, that schooner was dry docked, and it became the Museum of Great Lakes History. 
one of the very, very first purpose-built institutions to tell the story of maritime history in this region. Um, the schooner eventually rotted. It was probably pretty rotten by the time we got it. So they burned it here on the site and eventually filled in the land around it. And with a donation from the Dawson family, the Dawson Great Lakes Museum was built. At the same time, there was also a push to start preserving historic Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne is a facility slightly downriver that was built prior to the American Civil War, which really never fired a shot, but was a classic star fort. It had served during the Civil War, during the Spanish-American War, World War I and World War II, had served the United States Army as a base for induction and training and a parts depot. And we needed to save that history too. So there was a group from the Detroit Historical Society that kind of pushed that uh, to become part of the Detroit Historical Department. And eventually, by the time we got to 1960, all three of these were very active entities. So we had three facilities that were teaching Detroit history. Under the aegis of the Detroit Historical Department, part of our family, the Detroit Historical Commission, who was kind of overseeing everything, and the Detroit Historical Society, which was supporting all these efforts. By the time we get to the 1970s and 1980s, Detroit is going through some changes, demographically, financially, and the folks who are running the museums for the Detroit Historical Department are doing some very valiant and very good work, but they're doing it under rising expectations and falling budgets. And this was kind of the third phase. And they worked very, very well through that. Uh, Fort Wayne became kind of a focus for development. The idea was to make that a destination as the, the Henry Ford over in Dearborn was a destination for people around the country. Historic Fort Wayne was meant to be that too. And there was preservation efforts done at the fort. Meanwhile, at the Dawson Museum, a group called the Great Lakes Maritime Institute uh, helped expand this facility. They helped bring in our classic Gothic room from the city of Detroit 3, a beautiful side wheel steamer. They brought in the pilot house from the William Clay Ford, part of the Ford Motor Company fleet of ore carriers. And they really, really raised the level of the museums and what was going on within the Detroit historical community without much input from the city, which kind of got us to the fourth phase. By the time we got past the, the centennial and Detroit's 300th anniversary as a European settlement, it was becoming clear that the city department was no longer able to keep up with this, and they turned to the Detroit Historical Society, which had been supportive for so long, and said, would you be willing to manage our historical assets? And of course, uh, the society stepped up and said, absolutely. So by 2006, the assets, the artifacts, the fundraising efforts, the installation of exhibits, the management of programs was back in the hands of the Detroit Historical Society. So the fourth phase has been a lot of fun. I've been part of it. We have been able to renovate both museums through our Past Forward campaign. We've put in many, many award-winning exhibits. In fact, our Detroit 1967 exhibit went on to win not only national awards, but international awards, and stepped up the game of Detroit's historical museum and collections. Um, I should mention the collections because over time, what started out as a few things in that skyscraper has grown to over a quarter of a million objects. Some of them very large, cars and boats, and some of them very small, coins and sheet music. An incredible collection of Detroit history that's available for researchers, available for other museums to use, but best available for us to tell Detroit's story. Um, so this gets us up to phase five. Phase five is the future, and maybe phase six and phase seven. Not sure what those are, but Malika is going to discuss what those possibilities might be. Detroiters have lived and made so much important history. And we are so proud that the Detroit Historical Society has been here for 100 years to preserve, interpret, and exhibit many of those narratives your stories at the Detroit Historical Museum and the Dawson Great Lakes Museum. So what do Detroit's museums look like for the next 100 years? To be honest, we are still figuring that out. 
But here's what we do know. We know that building unforgettable experiences, championing diversity, equity, and accessibility, and creating financial sustainability are the pillars that will support our work for the next century. We envision museums with beautiful, inclusive spaces that are as welcoming and fluid as our amazing city. Museums that truly represent all Detroiters and that are well-equipped to tell their authentic and evolving stories. We envision museums without walls, bringing Detroit's broad history to wherever you may be. Detroit's diaspora will never have to miss home. And we know without question that we need you to help us chart that path that will make this vision a reality. By offering your input, becoming a partner, sharing your stories and artifacts with the Detroit Historical Society, you ensure that generations to come will have the benefit of your unique perspectives. Whether filled with joy or marked by sorrow, your stories, your truths, our shared histories will help us find our place in the present and serve as guideposts as we forge ahead. Detroit's museums for the next 100 years will do that and more. Join us for the journey. I'm Delisha Upshaw, membership manager here at the Detroit Historical Society. A few moments ago, our CEO, Ilana Rue, invited you to join us in our challenge to kick off another 100 years of success. Visiting our museum spaces is a great way to do that, but we hope you'll do more than just visit. We hope you'll make it official by becoming a member. Whether you've called Detroit home for days or decades, or enjoy stopping by to visit your favorite shop, restaurant, or entertainment and sports venue, or commute here for work, you can count on two things. You are an important part of Detroit's story, and you belong at the Detroit Historical Society. We have a variety of membership options that offer special access, information, and a best-in-class membership experience. Help us carry forward the legacy of 100 years of Detroit Historical Society members and set us up for success in our next 100. Visit our website to join today.